So welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna do a video on this 2017 Ford F-250 6.2 liter gas. And yeah, I'm really excited. Now this does have a six speed transmission. This thing is ancient and a lot of people do love the new 7.3 liter that Ford came out with. But today we're gonna to take this up 6% grade. Hopefully there's not too much traffic. And we're gonna see if this thing is capable as people say it's not. Let's get into it. Really quickly, be sure to subscribe to JB Reviews and make sure you have those bell notifications on. And be sure to check out my other channel, Attainable Exotic Cars. Now let's get back to the video. So here it is. This is gonna be your 6.2 liter V8. Now this is gonna be good for 385 horsepower, 430 pound feet of torque, made it to a six speed transmission. And this thing has 100,000 miles on it. So whoever owned this truck, they definitely did put this to the test. And I noticed in the bed, it has some holes drilled, which means they probably had a fifth wheel hitch. And because this doesn't have the prep package, it has a plug right there too. So whoever owns it, they were towing a fifth wheel or a gooseneck trailer with it. So this truck has already been put to the test already. It has new tires on it. This is a good day, guys. Like I cannot wait to put this on the road. Like I am so excited. If you don't know, I have a 28 foot race trailer. I have an Audi R8 in there. Weighs probably around 9,000 pounds with that car. I had a Charger Hellcat previously, and that car weighed about 1,000 pounds more than this car. This car does not have all-wheel drive, so it's actually a little bit lighter. And yeah, this should be a really nice test of 6% grade. Let's take a look at these numbers here. So if you're looking at a Ford from 2017, you're gonna see something similar to this, depending on if you have F250, 350. Now your front gross axle rating is 5,600 pounds. The rear is 6,340. You have a 10,000 pound GVWR. It does show you some numbers down here. It just does have a 160 inch wheelbase and the axle code is 3E. I looked it up online and that does show that it's a 373. All in payload capacity is 3,108 pounds. So yeah, this truck definitely has a lot of capacity. I have no doubt in my mind that you can tow a fifth wheel with this truck. Um, has a good amount of capacity. Out back, it does have leaf springs and does have a solid front axle on this too. Back in 2017, they still had a standard key. All right. So as far as your tow haul mode goes, this truck does have it on the uh, column shift. Right here, you just push the button in and when you push it, it comes up inside the small screen. I believe this is an XLT, so this is not a high trim level, which is why you probably have a lot more payload capacity. Now, as far as your trailer rig goes, it's right down below, right here. And I'm not sure if they really give you a lot of information in here. It shows your engine hours and engine idle hours. Transmission temperature, we'll be checking that out today. This is still empty, tire pressure, and back to the beginning. So let's see here, we're gonna be using this today. So I'll reset this when we leave. All right, and as far as towing goes, it does have some information here for some towing. So they have a connection checklist, trailer status, no active trailer, and then some other features here, trailer sway control. If you don't know what that is, it does use the rear brakes to help with trailer sway. All right, so as I said, let's back her up. So I'm actually off a little bit. Let's just go forward just a little bit. Straighten it up. Yeah, it's really hot today actually. It's, I think it's supposed to be 90 degrees. Saturday is becoming these hot days now. Oh, perfect. Here we go. And it should be right under. Oh, perfect. All right there. That should be good. Now you do have a mechanical emergency brake. Now let's go ahead and check and see where we are. Oh, perfect. So we are pretty much there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure before I let it all the weight get down on the truck. And we're gonna check how much it's gonna squat, okay? All right, so it looks like we're at 43 and 5 eighths. Beep. 
she leveled out perfectly. Um, I'm really happy with this. There's such a huge difference between heavy duties and half tons. It's not even funny. This is something to consider. But I have everything hooked up. I have my change cross, seven pin connectors hooked up, breakaway switch, coupler is secure and locked. This is a class five receiving hitch. So it's gonna have a two and a half inch opening for your hitch. And I'm not a huge fan of how you mount everything here. This is, I hate it. I think that they need to do something different with this in the future. But let's go ahead and measure one last time. And then we'll go over the tire uh, capacities too. All right, so we are at 41 and 3 eighths. All right, so we're in drive. I have tow haul mode on. As far as the trail rate goes, it's on gain number 10. We don't need it that high. I'm thinking five should be good. So we have it at five. And all you have to do is just pull forward a little bit like this and then pull it and eh, maybe a little bit more, maybe five and a half. There we go. That should be good there. I'm gonna reset this one more time. And then let's get on the road. I love doing these trucks with miles on them. Oh, it does show me where gear I'm into. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, this is, this has some good low end torque too for gas. Brakes feel good. I'm sure with 100,000 miles to dealership, Tate Chrysler, they, they, they've definitely changed these brakes off. They feel nice and tight. Yeah. I just towed with the Chevy Silverado around the parking lot. Totally different experience. I mean, even at higher speeds, you, I don't really feel the trailer back there. But when we get on this grade, that'll be the biggest test. Now I have a wide open throttle now. It's definitely, you, you know there's a trailer back there. But I'm in third gear. Drop down to second, wide open throttle. Third gear. Oh yeah, this is good stuff right here. I may have to reset the Philly comment one more time. But yeah, I'm experiencing a little bit of sway at 60, but it's not bad, not bad at all. Check out your tires. These are like an off-brand tire. I've never heard of them. It's L-A-U-F-E-N-N. -N. Now these are gonna be a LT275-70, 18 inch wheel. Your capacities are right. Here, it's a 10 ply and it has a single max per tire at, let's see here, I can't really see this, 3,640 pounds, 3305 for dual, and these are max 80 PSI. All right. We hit some traffic, unfortunately, but hopefully when the lanes open up, the traffic will kind of disperse. All the cars are trying to go a little bit quicker. I'm in the left lane right now. I don't want to slow any of the trucks down, so when we get to the front, we'll start the uh, acceleration test, all right? Go. We're at 40 miles an hour, wide open throttle. Drop down to second. struggling but man my ears just popped wow this is this wasn't bad 
towing about 9,000 pounds, no issues getting upgrades. The gas engine's back, guys. It's back. Actually, it never really left, but I thought it sounded cool at the time. A question we now have to ask ourselves is, is the diesel engine gonna be dead soon? I think that a lot of people are betting on electric cars. Man, there's a lot of sway. Huh. I'm going about 55 miles an hour because there's traffic. I mean, there could be some of that, um, some of the wind from these bigger trucks in front of me kind of making the truck sway a little bit. It's just, it's really probably the tires, but the steering feels really vague. Yeah, it's going side to side. I can see it in the, in the mirrors too. But a lot of people have said that the diesel engine is starting to not be worth the premium. I mean, you gotta pay anywhere between 9,000 and 12,000 on for an HD diesel these days. And yeah, I mean, the gas engine, you're, you're sure you're gonna not get the fuel economy, but you have to think about it like this too. All the money you're gonna spend on the diesel is almost not worth it once you start adding in your maintenance costs and just, just the upkeep, the DEF. I mean, there's just so many variables today that do make it harder to buy diesels. And a lot of people have been switching from diesel back to gas, whereas back in the you know, 2000s, you know, there was a, such a big diesel call, and then the EPA stepped in and decided to really screw it over by adding all the emissions crap. So, yeah, it's definitely something to consider. I mean, this truck has more than enough power, and even with it being kind of dated, the new 7.3 will do just as good. And it has a 10-speed transmission. I mean, the tr the transmission's pretty busy, even in tow-haul mode. Like, I see that it's kind of like fluctuating between the gears every once in a while, especially when you start going up a little bit of a grade. But I would rather hold the gears better in tow-haul mode as opposed to, you know, shifting so much. Just stay in the lower gear and just kind of stay there until, you know, you're on more flat grounds. All right, let's see if it's gonna do your downshifts. Got my foot on the brake. Nothing. It's already like in the lower gear, but I'm surprised it didn't try to shift down to second and first. So you're gonna have to give it some um, shifts on your own. You can shift it manually if you like. All right, let's go ahead and make our turnaround. This is the midpoint I always use. Man, check out these mirrors. I haven't pointed out just a little bit. I didn't go all the way, but even with them in all the way, you can see around the trailer pretty good. All right, we're gonna do a zero launch here to see how well this truck can kind of get up to speed from the dig, all right? Here we go. mid-engine so a lot of that weight 
did kind of shift onto the axles, but it's still kind of like in the center of the car in a sense. But yeah, I mean, the trailer is, maybe I should change cameras to show you, but it's definitely, it's definitely like, it's, well, it's not bad. Like, I mean, this truck is so heavy that like, I just have to just keep over correcting it, that's all. All right, check this out. 5.3 MPG so far, I reset it after the last zero acceleration test. And I actually set it going downhill just to kind of try to hypermodel it a little bit. And that's about what we're getting there. Overall, I mean, the noise from the engine is pretty loud too. So whenever you're accelerating, it does get kind of annoying. That's what I like about diesel engines too. They're a little bit quieter, even at hard acceleration. Um, I would like to test one of these with a 10 speed transmission though. Hopefully I can find one soon. I mean, I don't care what I gotta do because I wanna really remember this feeling that I have with this one and see if it's the same and you know, like a 2020 with the 10 speed F350, I believe that's the only way you can get that 10 speed in the six, with the 6.2. But overall, a great truck, I would definitely add a weight distribution hitch i wonder if it's because this truck is a little bit lighter i mean this truck doesn't have that many options on it and it being a xlt and the gas engine it's pretty light in comparison with a, a diesel equipped f-250 so i'm at 8.1 mpg that's down seven miles so when we get back it'll be about 10. i was going down some um grades too so that means you know you could probably get some pretty good mpg i have to do a running chart of all the trucks i've tested but this one did really well. I mean, there's a lot of sway. I mean, I don't know what it is. It could be windy. Maybe I, maybe where I'm at, there's just some wind kind of coming through, but I was at 80 miles an hour going downhill and I, I had to hit the brakes because it really started to like go side to side a little bit too strong for my takes. But all in all, we should be back in about five minutes or so and I'll let you guys know where we end off on MPG. All right, check it out. I got 9 mpg at 11.9 miles and 14 minutes so that is not bad at all for a gas i'm really happy with that like that's about maybe three or four mpg less than what i've seen from the diesels but all in all i mean that's that's really good stuff so in the comment section you gotta let me know what you thought about this video i thought that this 6.2 did exceptionally well performance wise fuel mileage it all did great now this did have a 373 rear so that definitely performed well now you can get the 430 and it's going to give you a lot better acceleration going up those grades but we got to 80 miles an hour so that ain't too shabby the 373 is going to land you better fuel mileage and you kind of saw that in the video we got nine miles to the gallon with the gas and that was climbing some grades and going down some grades but all in all I'm really impressed by this engine and I guess with the mileage it's just broken in all the way so it has great performance. But on that note, thanks so much for your time and watching this video. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.